We are continuing to go over information about the Anabaptists, which is on your Roman numeral 4 of your Protestant Reformation typed outline. We've already gone over the characteristics of the Anabaptists, and so next I'm going to mention a key event that took place involving this group. So if you look at your typed outline under Anabaptists, you should be on number 2 under um, the capital letter A. In 1532, a radical group of revolutionary Anabaptists, so this is just kind of a, a branch from um, this group, very radical, took control of northwestern German city of Munster. And this radical group of Anabaptists was led by John of Leyden. So to give you um, some specific radical ideas that this group uh, was known for, they instituted polygamy within their community. Uh, for example, John of Leyden had 16 wives. Uh, so again, if you believe in polygamy, you believe in having more than one wife. Women also served as leaders of this radical uh, group of Anabaptists. All books except the Bible were burned in the city. So again, they wanted to make sure that you were uh, not reading something that they didn't approve of. Some Lutherans and Catholics uh, were killed uh, in the German city of Munster. So again, this is just showing you how radical um, their ideas were and their actual actions. So if you look at what's called the Tragedy at Munster, we're going to see a combined army of Catholic and Protestant forces capture the city of Munster and execute the Anabaptist leaders, and that will include John of Leyden. Um, so action is taken against this radical group of Anabaptists. Um, it just took, you know, about three years for a combined army to be put together and actually, um, you know, go into the city and take care of this group. You can see here with this picture, the bodies of the Anabaptist leaders who were executed were put on public display in iron cages and these cages were hung from St. Lambert's Church for many years. So what this did was just serve as examples to others. Uh, don't do what the Anabaptists did uh, is the message that is being sent with this display of the uh, executed bodies. When it comes to the long-term impact of the Anabaptists, um, we'll take a look at two different examples. We have Quakers in England who shared similar beliefs to these Anabaptists. I'll give you an example. We know that thousands of these Quakers came to America uh, where they founded and controlled um, future states like Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. So what this is telling us is that there are groups of people who branched off of the Anabaptists and formed their own group. Quakers is one of them. Another branch from the Anabaptists are the Unitarians. They rejected the Trinity. And remember, they are also descendants of the Anabaptists. So rejecting the Trinity is a main belief of the Unitarians. And we know there are Unitarian churches in our country today. We also know that Luther did not believe in the legitimacy of any other faith except mainstream Protestantism. So what that tells us is all of these branches from Protestantism, um, like the Anabaptists and other groups we're about to go over, Luther is not going to recognize their legitimacy, okay? So make sure you know that because that shows you there are going to be many differences between what Luther believes and some of these other groups that are trying to branch off from Protestantism and form their own little group. 
Next, we need to mention Ulrich Zwingli, who should be on your capital B on your typed outline. He was a student of humanism, and he adopted Lutheranism in Zurich, Switzerland. So he is going to be centered around the Reformation that takes place in Switzerland. Uh, he establishes a theocracy. Remember, that means you've got a government run by a church leader. So it would be helpful to tell you that he was a priest. Okay. Uh, remember, we talked about Savonarola um, doing this in Florence, and he was a monk. So monks and priests, you know, they are all leaders within the church. One thing he actually had in common with Luther was that, like Luther, he believed the Bible should be the sole authority when it comes to religious practice. But Zwingli is not really known for um, how he's like Luther, because really he's not. In contrast, it says on number two to Luther, he saw the Eucharist, which is just the way of saying communion, you know, the bread and the wine, as only symbolic. Remember, Luther's view um, was of the real presence. And according to Zwingli, that view of the Eucharist or communion was way too Catholic in its foundation. So this is the first dispute among Protestants dealing with issues of doctrine. I would definitely add that statement under number two, so I'll repeat it. This is the first dispute among Protestants, first dispute among Protestants dealing with issues of doctrine, dealing with issues of doctrine. Well, Luther and Zwingli are going to hold a meeting to see if they can iron out this major difference in the um, Protestant doctrine. So the meeting is referred to as the Colloquy of Marburg. So that's the title of the meeting. And you can see here that Zwingli will officially split with Luther over the issue of the Eucharist, which again, if you don't like the word Eucharist, you can use the word communion, which is the Lord's Supper. Uh, so this was a major deal um, with Zwingli splitting with Luther because they could not see eye to eye when it came to this very important um, element of any church service. Luther's Augsburg Confession will exclude non-Lutheran reformers such as Zwingli. And that Augsburg Confession was written in 1530. By Luther's friend, Philip Melanchthon. Remember, this was in a previous section of your outline notes. Remember, that Augsburg Confession was um, Philip trying to unite the Lutheran and Catholic princes of the Holy Roman Empire. And that absolutely was rejected by those Catholic princes. So remember, we said this, is, this was the official statement for the Lutheran Church. And so what Luther, um, or excuse me, what that actual um, document is letting people know is if you are not Lutheran, then you are not going to be, um, you know, recognized. Okay. The next video, uh, which will be on a different day, will deal with a major branch of Protestantism known as Calvinism. So I'm going to save that for a different day's topic because it is much more involved um, than us going over the Anabaptists, for example. This is also a good time for me to remind you that our first quiz on the Protestant Reformation will cover sections one and two. So the actual date is posted in an announcement. So make sure you are reading those announcements 
uh, to get the official date for this first quiz. So once again, you are studying Roman numerals 1 and 2, and you will have all of that, um, or you should, excuse me, you should have all of that information um, by now.